My name is Hadria Stewart and I'm a member of the Kinson Technical High School family. Now let's get into our lesson for today. Let's talk, start off with our objectives. So by the end of today's session, you should be able to explain what context clues are. So make sure you pay attention. Make sure you have your notebooks and your pens and pencils and you're taking notes as we go along. Now, you should also be able to speak about the various ways in which context clues can be given and use the LPR3 strategy to decipher the meanings of unfamiliar words. So by the end of the session, you should be able to accomplish all of those. Reasonable, right? Very good. Now, look at this sentence. This is something for you to think about. It was your duplicity that caused me to end our friendship. If I were to say that to you, would you understand exactly what I mean? Hmm. Let's say you've never heard the word duplicity before. Never heard it, never seen it. Have I given you any clue at all that could help you to figure out its meaning? No, I have not. All right, so I know you're wondering, hmm, what does the word mean? I'm a bit confused. Help. Can you say it another way so that I can understand? All right. So we're going to focus on the importance of using context clues. Now, this says, it was your duplicity that caused me to end our friendship. Had you been honest, I wouldn't have felt the need. You have gotten some clues. I have given you some clues. So you can figure out what the word duplicity means. Obviously, it's the total opposite of honesty. So it simply means that you are deceitful. Mm-hmm. Right? So that is the reason why the friendship ended. So what the writer has done in this example, the writer has given you some clues to help you to figure out the meaning of the unfamiliar word. Now, when we look in the dictionary, right, we are finding the word duplicity. It is a noun and it means deceitfulness. Here's an example. The president was accused of duplicity in his dealings with the students' council, so he was not very honest at all. And here are some synonyms. So here are some words that we can use to replace duplicity. So we can use deceitfulness, deceit, deception, or deviousness, whichever one you're comfortable with, okay? Have you ever been reading a book or a short text and come across a word that you didn't know, so you kept rereading the sentence to try to figure out the correct meaning of the word? Of course you have, it happens to all of us, all right? Authors know that learning new vocabulary can be difficult, especially if you do not have access to a dictionary. The good thing about the City and Guilds exam is that you can take your dictionary and your thesaurus in the exam room. So as long as you take those with you, you will always have access to those in the exam. Now, they assist the readers by providing context clues. Okay, which are particular words or phrases in writing that will shed light on the meaning of certain words. So when we talk about context clues, we are talking about phrases. We're talking about words that will help you to understand or to decipher or to figure out the meaning of unfamiliar words. So authors use context clues to create hints. When you read, you have to become a literary detective. So you have to search for all of those clues. So the authors will use the context clues to create hints as a way to assist the readers in defining a tough or uncommon word. The readers can find the clue appearing within the same sentence as the word it is providing context to, or sometimes it can be found in the following sentence. So you have to look all around the word in every direction possible. This process allows readers to use their high order thinking skills to construct the meaning of a word by putting together clues found in the sentences around it. These inferences will allow readers to make logical guesses about the meanings of many, many words. So remember, you are now a literary detective, so you have to go searching for clues. Now I'm going to introduce you to the LPR3 strategy, write it down. Right? So when we talk about L, look. Right? So the L stands for look. Look before, look at, and you can also look after the word, after the new word to see if you can find any clues that can help you to figure out the meaning. Having done that, you go on to the next phase, which is to predict. Okay? So quickly predict the word's meaning. Remembering that even a wrong prediction is often a good start. Okay? Then we go now to reason. So we're using up the higher order thinking skills. So you're going to think more carefully about the word's meaning. Don't just brush over it, right? Think carefully about the word's meaning, trying to be as precise as the context clues permit. And then resolve. 
recognize that you may need to take other steps. Maybe you definitely need to go to the dictionary or you may need to ask someone to assist you to arrive at the meaning for the unfamiliar words. And you may have to redo, you may have to go through the process all over again. So go through the steps again if necessary until you're able to find out what this unfamiliar word means and you add that word to your vocab. So that's the LPR3 strategy. Now look at this sentence. Billy's reply was quite incoherent. What if you've never met that word before? Would this sentence give you enough um, for you to figure out what the word means? No, it wouldn't. So in this particular case, the writer has not given you any context clues. A little confused, eh? All right, let's get rid of the confusion. So this is how you can use the LPR3 strategy. In using the strategy, I, the reader, right? I first need to look where? Before, at, and after the unfamiliar word incoherent. Then I need to predict what the word might mean by substituting other words that could make sense in the sentence. So I could say, okay, incoherent means funny, stupid, clever, or wrong. I'm not yet quite sure, but I'm exploring all my options. When I try to reason or look more closely at the context, all I know is that incoherent is being used to describe Billy's reply. That's all I got. I think I need a little more help to resolve the meaning of this word. I'm asking for some context clues. I'm asking the writer to help me out here, okay? And the writer is kind enough to do just that. So here is a revised sentence. Due to a severe lack of sleep and extreme nervousness, Billy's reply was incoherent. So now we have gotten some clues. So he was, he was tired. He didn't get any, um, good sleep and he was nervous. So in this particular case, you're thinking that maybe what he said was, was not so clear, right? It was unclear. So we have looked at the dictionary definition to confirm what we just said. So of course the word is an adjective. When we're talking about spoken or written language, it means expressed in an incomprehensible or confusing way, unclear. So what Billy said, is totally confusing, right? It's unclear because he's tired and he's extremely nervous. Here's an example of the word used in another context. He screams some incoherent threats. And these are some synonyms that we can use for incoherent. Unclear, confused, muddled, unintelligible, and incomprehensible. So I'm not understanding it. It is not clear at all. Okay? When we use the word to talk of a, of a person, it means unable to speak intelligibly. He was incoherent with sentiment. And here are some additional synonyms, delirious, raving, babbling, hysterical, and irrational. It also means not logical or internally consistent. And in this case, we could say the film is ideologically incoherent. All right, so you have learned a new word, add it to the vocab. Now, you would agree with me that context clues are helpful for learning new words and better understanding what we read. So our job is to find the clues and do what? Use them. Yes, we are literary detectives, so we're going to search for the clues. And once we've found them, we are going to use them. Now, there are different types of context clues. Yes. Right? We spoke yesterday about the fact that varieties is, is spice of life. Okay. Now, the author can give you context clues in many, many different ways. All right. So, we can use synonyms as context clues. And you remember what synonyms are, right? Oh, yes. Words that are similar in meaning. So, the most basic and perhaps the most helpful type of context clues are synonyms. So, if I don't know the word, I may know another word that is related to this new word. If you can't decipher a meaning, adding a few synonyms or words with similar meanings is a sure way to point to a word's meaning. Let's take a look at an example. She hums continuously or all the time and it annoys me. Maybe you can think of somebody who does that, right? So the writer here gives you a synonym for continuously all the time. So something that is done all the time. So just in case you didn't know what continuously means, the writer has given you some synonyms, all right? Or a synonym. So it means all the time. Now you can also get definitions as context clues. So if you were to actually look in the dictionary, you would find something similar. So a synonym is one way to understand the meaning, but how about a straightforward definition? 
it's hard to misconstrue a context clue when the actual definition is provided. And here are a few examples. The manager wanted a weekly inspection, which is a methodical examination of all the equipment. So if you are meeting the word inspection for the very, very first time, the writer has assisted you by explaining to you what inspection means. So the writer has given you the definition, okay? So you should have no problem understanding the sentence. Now the second one says, Diane was lethargic. She didn't have the energy to get out of bed. And I'm sure all of us feel like that from time to time. If you are meeting the word lethargic for the very, very first time, here is the clue, all right? You didn't have the energy, so we know exactly what it means. Now, antonyms can also be used as context clues. So we heard about the synonyms, and now we're going to talk about the antonyms. And I'm sure you remember what antonyms are. Now, sometimes the best way, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the best way to understand something is to understand what not to do or what something is not. In the same way, an antonym or an opposite, so the writer has given you a synonym here, can convey meaning. If you point out the differences, you can come to understand each component better. Let's look at this sentence. Marty is gregarious, unlike his brother who is quiet and shy. Okay, so they are opposite persons. So one is quiet and shy and one is gregarious. So obviously this one is very sociable and talkative and full of energy. Very good. Now, this one says, the, this painting of the landscape is picturesque, while the, one, while the one of the old house is just plain and ugly. So picturesque would be the opposite of plain and ugly. So very attractive, very colorful. Okay. You can also get context clues as explanations. So you can get definitions, you can get synonyms, you can get antonyms, and you can also get explanations. So the writer can give you many, many, many hints to help you to figure out the meanings of these unfamiliar words. Don't miss the clues. Pay attention to details. Has a friend or family member ever asked you to just come right out with it? Sometimes readers don't want to search for your meaning. Sometimes we're impatient readers. Instead, if you provide a bigger picture and you offer added detail or context, the reader will come to understand the tricky word. Here are some examples. The team was elated because they just found out that they placed in the semifinals. Now, how would you feel if you were placed in the semifinals? I'm sure that you'll be very happy, right? In a very, very cheerful mood. So based on the explanation given, we can figure out that the word elated means happy. Now, during the demonstration, a skirmish broke out, so the police were called to restore order. So the skirmish broke out. Hmm, why? And what happened as a result? The police were called. So skirmish obviously is the opposite of order. So it's chaos, it's disorder. Then the other example says, we know the dog has a kind disposition because we've never seen her bite or scratch anyone. Right? So we're talking about the dog's character. So we look at the things that the dog has never done, right? And we know that the word disposition here is talking about the dog's character. You can also get context clues in the form of examples. You can get context clues in the form of descriptions. And you can also get context clues in the form of restatements. As I said before, pay attention to details. Very, very important. Now, even the most esteemed intellectuals have to look up a word from time to time. Yes, there is no one human being who knows everything, right? However, in the moments when we do not have access to our dictionaries, cell phones, tablets, or laptops, a couple strong context clues might help us understand a given word's meaning. So let us pay attention. In the meantime, there are a couple ways to ward off your uncertainty surrounding new words or phrases, so make use of them. Make it a goal to increase your vocabulary every day. How are you going to do that? Read read, read, okay? Now, let's do a little practice. So Miguel was very loquacious. He really loved to talk. Do you know anybody like Miguel? Mm-hmm, I do, all right? So here we are and meeting the word loquacious for the very first time. 
have no clue what it means. But when I look at the second sentence, I realize that the definition is given or the description is given. He really loves to talk. All right, so I've gotten the definition right there. No confusion. This rambunctious the rambunctious children ran out to the bus and climbed on board. They jumped and yelled and just couldn't settle down. Sounds like they're full of energy, right? Exactly. So we know what these, um, the word rambunctious means. Very energetic and lively. Don't sulk, said Dave's mother. I need someone to talk to me today. Please don't sulk. Don't go in a bad mood. right? Don't go quiet on me today. I need somebody who is in a talkative mood today. Then we were all very suspicious. Hmm, wonder what that means. Well, we didn't know who to trust. So if I am suspicious, it means I don't think I can trust you, right? The ancient Chinese used the abacus, a device with movable beads that can be used as a calculator. So the writer has given us the definition right there and then. So if I didn't know the word abacus before, now I know. So all I need to do as a reader, and I want all of you to become excellent readers, is to pay attention to details and don't be in any rush. Take your time, read, spend time to uh, identify the context clues and decipher those word meanings and add those words to your vocab. And of course, you can make your little vocab book. All right. So every time you meet a new word, you can write it down, write down the part of speech and write down the definition. And then you can make your own examples and use these words in your own examples. Now, let's recap today's lesson. So we say that context clues are particular words or phrases in writing that will shed light on the meaning of certain unfamiliar words. Context clues are helpful. Yes, they're there to help you for learning new words and better understanding what you read. Context clues can be given in various ways. Synonyms, the antonyms, the definitions, the explanations, and so on. And we can use the LPR3 strategy to help to decipher word meaning. So we're going to look, we're going to predict, we're going to reason, resolve, and we're going to redo.